Easter Saturday, if that's a thing. It's Saturday after Good Friday. And we're back to work. So yesterday I was working on the 4440 way in behind there. And then we, I got pretty much to done everything that can be done until we get more parts. So we started working on the cedar. We are waiting on parts yet, like we still need the semi pneumatic tires. But we've been flipping these guys over. The boot protector, shank protector, and then there's this outside boot plate that we've been replacing because they're about razor blades. It's actually quite a simple job, it's just a little bit awkward. We've got probably half of them done. And we, we kind of noticed that some of these siege shoots barely got pushed in. That's a really awkward job to do. But we found that, and this is through our dealer, they were saying, yeah, just slob them up with PAM cooking spray. And you can really bury them quite nicely. And it gets that one there I did, it had a pinhole in it so we replaced the whole thing yeah you can I don't know if you can see the little bit of oil there but I was able to bury that thing to about half an inch from the end makes a big difference if it's like 15 to 20 degrees or better out because when we replaced all of them a couple of years ago it was about four degrees and we were trying five or six different i think we used two different types of wd-40 and another like deep creep deep creep seemed to work pretty good uh problem is not all of these can be pushed in all the way they need some give to them but uh yeah so we got half of them done if it warms up nicely this afternoon we will likely start into the main hoses here get those all freshed up but right now i think i'm gonna crawl underneath underneath is not a lot of room it's not a lot of fun especially when it's folded up but i will probably just try and get what i can because we need to lift these shanks the backs are actually staying up pretty good it's just, uh, you say, Devin, why are you wearing a hard hat? Well, because I bash my head off of stuff a lot. And I'm the supervisor. Had a tough day yesterday. Had to go for stitches. That was fun. Of course, it's like Saturday of Easter weekend. Smart. Well, that's what got me. The thing is, we, we stored this thing boxed up over the winter, and the middle bolts, or sorry, the middle shanks, they creep down and they're sitting in the snow. So they were, the bottom bolts of them were a lot rustier. And some of them were so crusty that they, uh, they seized up when I was backing them off with my little impact driver. And so these are carriage head bolts inside that, and there's like a square hole on that protector and a square hole on this and I was holding it with my middle finger on the carriage head and it must have rounded off the carriage shoulders and I'm guessing I just had my other finger kind of laying right there and it just went shing and uh, it bled a lot and if you want a little bit of a reenactment well I was I think I was on that high shank, or I was one row in, I can't remember. But essentially, so we moved the, the whole unit about 15 feet forwards this morning, but it was pretty much right here. I did notice some blood droplets first thing in the morning, but we've been walking around, we must have cleaned it up. But, so it happened pretty much where, 
damn, damn close to here. So I cut, I said one bad word, which is quite surprising. I would have expected a lot more, but it was really clean, like clean cut, so it didn't hurt. And then I came out, I got out about here. I looked at it again, it went blah, 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 a lot of blood. Oh boy. And then I got mad because all day I'd been working at focusing on trying to keep my finger away and doing it right. And then I forgot. So I spiked my hard hat because I was mad. And I was actually wearing a hard hat because I hate working under those shanks without one. Spiked it. And then I stormed off. Went to the house. Said, hey mom, can you drive me to the hospital? I think I need stitches. She goes, oh, okay. Well, let's see it. And I was washing it up. She goes, yep, you definitely need stitches. She used to be a nurse way back in the day. And then she said, oh, we better call the hospital because of COVID, which was a great move on her behalf. And they said, oh, the doctor's not in until one. So we'll come for 12.30. And I did. So after we finished that, we started prepping for the hose removal. So all those mains, the two and a half inch mains, are getting replaced front to back. We're not doing any splices or anything. I, I would have loved to put some pipe in there, like some stainless steel pipe. But uh, we're, you know, in reality, we're probably trading this thing off in a year or two. So by the time we need to replace everything again, it'll be gone. Uh, the newer ones, I'm, I know definitely Borgo has them, the stainless pipes. They have the runs on the back and then it's just a, like where the hinge points are. It's just some flex hose. I really like that idea. Um, I also am really tempted to get my brother to just cut me some expanded metal catwalks just for in the morning like to put across here and just because we usually get up and we sh we shake all the tubes and we double check that everything's nothing's loose nothing nothing has pinholes and nothing's rubbing plugged all that stuff definitely tempted i don't i will but really tempted what else did we do to oh we were still working on the hose prep and you know as you can see there's a few splice or menders in there uh, and there's some protectors too but just wherever there's a, a real major turn we tend to have wear outs and then every time we have a splice or a mender we always seem to start having more issues with that leg or that run so I took all these off we labeled them all just so we know what the lengths are and we had to chip a bunch of rust off all the fertilizer runs. And if, you, if they look a little yellow, that's because they got grease on them. We usually, it's, yeah, def, first thing you want to do is clean off all the rust because they tend to swell and then they're a really tight fit. So I, I chip them off with a file and then I polish them up with emery cloth. Then I grease the hell out of them and that's got about three purposes number one it prevents rust from forming number two it makes putting on the pipes a lot easier like when we put them on we're gonna soak them in warm water and we slip them on and then we impact them on the the clamps on so it really Im imprints on it and it it seals really nice but the grease actually also fills all the imperfections for, and pitting or you, you might see a couple spots where i kind of gouged it with the sawzall it it seals that up nice so you don't end up with leaks as well so that's a pro tip uh tomorrow morning i'm actually running up to Langbank to Vatterstad to pick up the bottom new bottom end assembly for the conveyor and then that that top wind guard 
and a bunch of paint and some u-bolts mainly spare parts but the big stuff i'm take i'm getting off of them is the uh the conveyor stuff and then on tuesday i think tuesday they said these are the new semi pneumatics are going to be in so we'll change all those out and uh you know we're talking later in the week we should be in really good shape like i wouldn't say we're going to be ready for this thing to go to the field but we'll probably be you know the big the big jobs will be done is what i'm hoping as long as we don't find any calamities and then you know we should be getting into doing oil changes which we thought about doing before but uh it was cold this coming week's supposed to be warm so that'll be a good day to do oil change or a good week to do oil changes and you know lubes and blow out air filters that kind of stuff uh the other reason we were waiting is this hose is a lot easier to handle when it's you know 10 to 15 degrees or warmer versus two to five degrees it's pretty stiff at that temperature we might try and find a way i don't know if we can or not that, but some of the hoses they might need to get pushed in further i saw there was one or two of the fertilizer boots that get worn through Let's see if i could find one i know i think 40 was toast there's 43 there yeah so without crawling in you can see where we didn't get it in all the way we got it in fairly good but uh the fertilizer at the high rate that we have to put it on it, it gets pretty abrasive and it wears through um but what we found is yeah you just slob them up real nice with uh pam cooking spray both the inside and the out, you make sure it's nice and well lubricated and you just smash it in there. So there'll be, you, know, you see how that guy's really not in that far. Other jobs, you can see there's a, that guy's a bit leaky. There's about six or eight of those shanks that probably need new seals or uh, the hydraulic ends need tightened or changed out stuff like that um little paint touch-ups i got lots of paint that's here uh you know there might be a hose or two that has a, a soft of these guys that has a soft point from rubbing on the frame for example this guy Ow. you can see it's been rubbing but i think we replaced this guy part way through last year so it's probably okay and then and also the maintenance stuff as far as greasing all of our pivot points greasing all of our hubs and axles and we'll pull out the meters make sure the metering bars make sure everything's good there we'll test run that uh i got a few things like i'll probably buff the crap out of that and repaint it uh just try and get ahead of it a little bit yeah that's going to be awkward to do without taking the whole conveyor off not really sure we'll to be you know that might be a end of the season job where i actually turn that's our slave and it looks oh so pretty uh something interesting is this one's all black and the other one we had was burgundy like seed hawk burgundy so i don't know if this is just an aftermarket convey all but i i like the black a little better uh just on the tail as a like almost an accessory i do i don't mind the the burgundy and black i like the new red and yellow um the vatterstad it, it's very comparable to the the ver versatile throwback um so tomorrow 
we kind of got to do everything once we get everything undone we got to do things backwards in reverse so this will go on first like we'll have to feed the belt through the top and out the ass end get this guy mounted feed the belt up through the bottom uh, make the splice up tighten it and then we got to mount our little saddle thing and then we got to put that on and one thing i noticed that i'm probably going to do is i'm probably going to drill a hole here just so that we can get to the um grease zerk because any way you put it on there it's going to be wrong and yeah we'll need a new chain because the other one was rusty and crusty but uh yeah we're this is going quite well i say that now i might regret that saying it tomorrow